Well, once again, you've told me what you want to see, and I'm going to do my best to try and deliver. On today's episode, we're going to show you how to make some drawers using a drawer locking bit. Hello folks, my name is Chad Stanton, a professional furniture maker of over 20 years, sharing my knowledge with you. So in my last episode, I showed you some geometry, and I told you I had a choice between making this table or doing some drawers with a drawer locking bit. And I was so surprised how many of you wanted to see the drawer locking bit, so let's get right into it. So here's a desk that I recently finished for a client, and I used the drawer locking bit on it. Now the reason I like using the drawer locking bit so much is it's fast and it's strong. Here, let's take a closer look. So if you look real closely, our side piece, as it comes up, it locks in to our front. So here's an exploded view of the joint. You can see that our side piece will come up and lock into our front, thereby connecting the two, giving it a lot of strength when pressure is applied to it. Best thing is, this joint is made with one router bit, but does two cuts. Now, just like anything, it does have some drawbacks. So let's talk about those right now. So there's a lot of different drawer locking bits out there on the market. The one I just happen to be using is the Freud 99-240. Now I bought this bit about 10 years ago, but I really only started using it about two years ago. And why is that? Well, it didn't really come with directions. It came with this little diagram and looking at it, it seemed simple enough. Make two of those and they'll lock together. But when it came to setting it up in the router table, I couldn't figure it out. One of the reasons I couldn't figure it out was I needed to make drawers like right now. And this bit actually requires you to play with it a little bit and make some setup blocks. Once you have the setup blocks, it'll be super easy to do it next time. But the first time, it's probably gonna take you a little while. Now, there might be some other brands out there that come with directions, and maybe even the Freud one today comes with some directions, but if not, I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here. Now, let me give you the three criteria that I have to use this drawer locking bit. Okay, my first rule is I make all my drawers out of 5 8 inch thick material. Now, uh, why is this? Well, three quarter inch, it just looks too thick. It looks too bulky and clunky. Uh, so I don't, I don't use that. And the standard industry out there seems to be uh, a half inch thick for drawers. But I like to tell my clients that when they get a piece of furniture from me, I build it above average. So that's why I like to go with five eighths. Now the drawer locking bit will work either for three quarters or for half inch. But if you do one of these, you're gonna have to make a different set of setup blocks. Okay, the second thing that I do when I'm using this bit is I don't use it on plywood. Now, maybe it can be done, but when I tried it and I ran the bit going across the veneer grain, it really ripped it up bad. I imagine it could work if you were going with the grain on the veneer, but that would require all your drawers having the grain running vertical, and I think that would look weird. I always like the grain running horizontal. So that's the second criteria that I have when using this bit. So the third rule that I have is when I'm making my drawers, I make the height of the drawer about a quarter inch taller than what I need. So if I really need a six inch tall drawer for my unit, I'm first gonna make it at six and a quarter. Now I'll, I'll explain this why in a little bit, but right now let's get over to the router table where I have the bit in it and I'll show you the measurements to get started. Okay, so I have the router bit in the table for our first setup, which will be making the fronts and backs to the drawer. Now, uh, the first measurement that I wanted to do was to get the height of the router bit up. Uh, that height up is 1330 seconds. That's just a fuzz shy of 7 sixteenths. Now, keep in mind, there's a little bit of wiggle room with these. And once you have your setup blocks 
uh, you won't have to really worry about these measurements that precise. But this is uh, the measurement that I had uh, to, to make my setup blocks, okay? So that's the first one. Now to, to bring that up to that measurement, uh, one of my favorite tools that I use all the time is a little six inch uh, combination square. And uh, many times if I need to set the height for the table saw, blade, a dado, a, a router, uh, this, this gets me real close, uh, pretty precise. And this does have, this one is by Swanson, um, this one does have uh, 30 second increments on it. So I can uh, set that for 13, 30 seconds and raise the bit up till I just see it start to to hit this, okay? But I found another tool that seems to be a little bit better. Uh, this tool is by Trent, and you can see that it will straddle the bit, which makes it a little bit nicer because uh, this combination square has the tendency to, to you know, fall to the one side. So uh, this is a little bit nicer in that regard. It too has measurements set for uh, a 30 second. So I can set that on there, uh, put it on and raise the router bit up till it just starts to touch, okay? The second measurement that I have is 15, 30 seconds. That's just shy of a half an inch. And that is with the router bit turned to its uh, most extended part out from, from the fence, okay? So from that point back to the fence, I'm at 15, 30 seconds. And again, I could set this for that, um, have it straddle across the opening on the fence and get it set up. Okay, that's our first setup and I will we'll make the cut. Now it's, it's not really required um, but I'm, I'm going to put a feather board on here just to make sure that my piece stays nice and flat. All right, so here's my piece that I want to put that uh, router cut on. Of course, it's going across the end grain. So when that comes out the back side, it's uh, going to probably splinter and have some uh, blowout on it. So take another scrap piece of wood, the same thickness of the material you're working with, and we'll put that uh, behind it. And as we push it all the way through, that should help eliminate some of that tear out. Uh, and as I noted, I put, a, I put a fingerboard on here just to help keep the pressure downward on it. Okay, there you are. That's our first cut uh, that we're going to make. And I don't know if you saw it, but when the uh, sacrificial board came out on the back end, look how that blew apart. <laughs> okay, so you certainly don't want that on your drawer front. But uh, if you do get a little uh, blowout on that, uh, I'll tell you what to do in just a minute. Okay, now without changing uh, the height of that bit, we're just going to move the uh, fence and that will make our second cut, which will be the sides, although it will be put in a little bit different. Okay, once again, I just want to say that I did not change the height of this, but I brought the fence forward and measuring from the tip of the router bit again to the fence, this distance here is a quarter inch. All right, now uh, let me show you how our piece is gonna go through on this one. Okay, unlike our front and back where the pieces were flat and horizontal went through, our side pieces are gonna go through vertical. Now for this one, I highly encourage you to use the feather board. And I made a simple little jig that goes on the back to help prevent the tear out on it. So let me set this all up and I'll show you how it works. So the feather board is put on horizontal. So when the piece goes in, it's gonna keep that pressure uh, pushed up against our fence. 
Now, remember I said, just like on the, uh, the, the first piece that we did, we had a lot of tear out. Well, same thing, I have a, a board that I'll put behind it to help uh, prevent that tear out. But what I did was I just simply uh, screwed a dowel on here so I can uh, use this handle. Uh, you can't see it there, but I can use this handle on it to help push the piece through and my, my palm is keeping it uh, flat against the fence. All right, so let's make the cut and see how it comes out. Okay, uh, there it is, piece is through. Yeah, maybe that's a good profile you can see. Uh, looks like I still got a little bit of chipping, just a small amount of tear out on there. Um, but first, I want to test our fit. Okay, these are the actual two pieces that I ran through on the table saw, and now let's check the fit. So, this was our front, this was our side, and they go together very nice. So from here on out, I can save these two pieces and they will be my setup blocks. I won't have to use those precise measurements anymore. I can just use this as a setup block, make sure that the router bit just barely touches and I'm gonna be good to go. Uh, now remember, I said that on, on the side piece here, uh, when it came through, I had a little bit of a tear out. So let me just flip this around, show you what that looks like. And yeah, yep, see that little tiny chip in there, right there. I know that doesn't look like much, but when the customer opens the drawer and sees that little bit in there, even if you put wood filler in it, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Now, yes, you could put this on the other side and this would be facing the bottom, but if that happens every time you put it through the router table, eventually you're gonna have one of these facing up. So my rule number three, if you made this a quarter inch wider than what you originally need, I can rip a quarter inch off on the table saw, get down to my actual width that I need, or I'm sorry, get it down to my actual height that I need, and my problem goes away. All right, now these are your setup blocks for the next time you make some drawers. And trust me, it goes really fast. You don't have to do all that measuring. All you have to do is just make sure that you have the right clearance. Uh, when you put this in, bring the router bit right up to it, and you are good to go. However, one last thing, so you don't forget your setup. What I did on my uh, setup blocks is I wrote front and backs, uh, 5 8 inch material. Remember, if you go with half or 3 quarters, uh, you're going to have to make new setup blocks. And I also wrote that this one lays flat going through. And on the other one, I have the sides. Once again, my 5 8 inch material. And this one I put upright. Okay? With that, every time I make these drawers, it's easy breezy. All right, one last tip I like to give. Now that you have your setup box made and you say come back to the router table uh, later to make some drawers again and you have to go and reset it up, well what I like to do is when I'm raising that router bit up into place, I also like to have a little flashlight and I'll shine it through the back and then when I look down the front I can bring that router bit up and when the light is gone I know I got it perfect. And so there you are, that is my experience working with the drawer locking bit. Now this drawer, once it's glued up, is incredibly strong. But if you feel you want to make it even stronger, you can add dowels in it, such as this picture here. And you can see it even makes it look decorative too. Now to really make it strong, I suggest putting the dowels in on an angle. If you want further explanation of that, I did a video called The Secrets of the Half Lap Dovetail, and I explain in depth how those angled uh, dowels will really strengthen it up. So if you're still here with me, I thank you for watching the video this far. I'll tell you about some upcoming things I'm gonna be doing here. Um, that small, round, three-legged table. Well, that'll probably be the next video, and it might be interesting to watch because 
what my original plan and material was uh, completely changed by the time I got to the end. But uh, that's always the best part of woodworking, right? It's the whole journey of the process. Uh, some other things that you're probably aware of, uh, any of the tools that I used in today's video, if you're interested in them, I have some links below in the description, as well as a link to my website where it, it features a lot of the tools that I would suggest for you. Also, in, down in the description box, you can find some suggested reading material that you might enjoy having in your library connection. Uh, we also have the, the Facebook page called What Are You Doing? that you can sign up and join for that, uh, share what you're doing in your shop, and uh, just get some ideas from others on that group page. And so if you are new to the show, we do offer a free monthly newsletter, and that is available free to you through the sponsors of Crystalac, KenCraft, and Frontward Web Hosting. So you can sign up below for that. As always, if you have any questions about what you're doing in your shop and would like some help, well, feel free to email me at woodshopintime at gmail.com because my whole goal is to make you a better woodworker. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and well, as you know, keep on dancing. <laughs>